there's been some significant changes to the French Open power rankings. If you want to see any of the stats these rankings are based off of, I've posted the updates on Twitter. Since the last video, we have had two 250s. They were won by Sebastian Baez and Holger Rune, as well as a second Masters and fourth title this year for Carlos Alcaraz, aka Charlie. That's put him very close to Nadal in the race to Turin, toppling Sitsapas for the best clay win percentage this season and the race on clay. Finalist Zverev is also starting to pop up on these lists after a horrendous start to the year. Still, my start of year prediction for him to win the French is still alive, I guess, maybe? Anyway, the power rankings. Nadal playing his first match means he can finally jump aboard, automatically pushing everyone down by one. Alcaraz stays where he is. You could make a case for him at number two, but I think Djokovic's history at the tournament is the most important factor in that debate. Tsitsipas has been replaced by Alcaraz for now, but the Rome conditions should suit him a little better than Madrid, so we could see him recover once more. Zverev and Rublev both down by one thanks to Rafa. Nothing to report there. Her catch is new on the list. Nothing outrageous, but posting some solid results for the first time on clay. Rude, meanwhile, has not. Other than a title earlier this year, the proper clay season has been a bit rubbish for him. Fair enough, Lajevic is a clay specialist, but Rude should be beating him any day. I'm not sure what's happened. Let's not forget about the waiting list, it's changed quite dramatically, with Opelka not backing up his title with a run at the best clay tournament for him in Madrid, he moves off as well as Fritz, who skipped Madrid and now Rome, which isn't good, hopefully he gets back soon. On that waiting list, however, is Kesmanovic, who's just getting in matches, clearly wanting to keep the momentum going for as long as possible. Next is Goffan, finally showing us that fantastic shot making that took him to the 2017 ATP Finals. The other two are Dimitrov and FAA. Dimitrov is, as I said last time, one of those players that's always going to be in that waiting list, but he's, he's never leaving, we know this. FAA had an awesome win over Sinner, only to completely lose it against Zverev. His game, quite like Zverev, I think is based off of confidence. It'll have spells of top 5 tennis, but the rest of the season it'll drop down to top 20. If I'm being honest, yes he's young, same as Zverev, they have time to work it all out, but I'm afraid they could follow the likes of Dimitrov. The scar tissue and mental toll all this has is just going to build up until you finally give in and accept I'm not capable of anything more. Anyway, onto the Rome draw. The seeds are Novak Djokovic, Riley Opelka, Diego Schwartzman, Felix Auger Aliassim, Rafael Nadal, Denis Shapovalov, Huber Herkac, Kasper Rude, Andre Rublev, Yannick Sinner, Pablo Carreño Busta, Stefanos Tsitsipas, Carlos Alcaraz, Cameron Norrie, Dusan Lajevic, and Alexander Zverev. It's looking like Djokovic has an okay draw. Karatsev has been nothing since Sydney. Stan the man and Opelka in round one. I think Opelka, but if Vavrinka's gonna get a big win, this is the tournament and player to get it on. We could see a Djokovic Vavrinka round three. Ketsmanovic Schwartzman in the first round. That's not nice. Schwartzman likes it here in Rome though final in 2020, beating Rafa, and a semi or two I believe also. He beats who he's supposed to beat and nothing more, so no threat to Novak in round 4. Check out this tweet I made about him earlier in the week. Nadal's draw is a big unknown for me. Isner shouldn't be a threat on this slow surface. Shapovalov, you never know what you're going to get, hence why I have Evans coming through. And with a slice as your main weapon, you're going to be a bit screwed versus Rafa, really. But in the quarterfinals, he could face Herkatch, Goffin, Korda, or Rude. With Rude just losing it this clay season, I can see Korda coming through. Goffin and Herkatch is a tough round one. I have Herkatch higher on my power rankings, but with three quarterfinal appearances, Goffin will get a rematch, I believe. A rematch, but definitely not as close a match as in Madrid. His ball striking was brilliant. The angles he found were amazing, 
but on the slow courts, it's not going to be as easy. Team has Fanini in the first round and a potential round two versus Yannick Sinner, which I am looking forward to. But I do have the Italian coming through and actually beating Rublev. Sits a pass back on a favoured surface, shouldn't have any trouble coming through, and he's dominated Sinner mostly in all their meetings, including in the Australian Open earlier this year. Alcaraz has since making my picks pulled out, being replaced by Emil Roussevori. I did have him losing in the quarterfinal to Zverev this time after predicting him to win Madrid. Zverev meanwhile has a really nice draw, especially with the Spaniard gone. So my semis then, they are Nadal over Djokovic and Tsitsipas over Zverev, with the Spaniard picking up his first Masters of the Year ready for the French Open. As long as he's fit and healthy, I can't see him having any trouble. We knew Madrid would be tricky, that was more getting rid of the rust before the Rome warm-up tournament where he gets in the matches he needs ready for Roland Garros. Hopefully I can do a proper breakdown for the French, I'm changing things up slightly on the channel, trying new things, as well as my second channel doing well the last couple of months, so it's been a bit hectic. Expect something out on Alcaraz soon, I hate saying things like that, as I never end up releasing them, usually thanks to copyright issues. Speaking Speaking of, the Indian Wells Del Potro win reaction is currently fighting copyright issues. It'll be there soon with more to come.